you know, when we hear about terms like, let's say, the Build Back Better bill or the Inflation Reduction Act, do you look at the wording of these types of bills as an insult to people's intelligence, Michael? Uh, I mean, this is the government. This is the feckless nature of government. Government. I mean, the, the way they fight inflation is by giving people money. I mean, this is like, OK, so how college tuition is too expensive. So what's the answer from government? Is the answer from government to bring more market-based forces into college, you know, college costs? No. Increase the supply of colleges? No. What the government does is, hey, it costs too much to go to college, so I'm going to give people more money to make it affordable. Hmm. Well, this is the same thing they're doing now in the United Kingdom. You know, energy prices are too high, so I'm going to raise a bunch of debt and hand people a check. So all you're doing is creating more demand for the commodity or for the service and the you know, and educational services, and which causes the prices to rise. There's nothing to deal with supply, and it makes the makes the whole thing more expensive. And by calling this act the Inflation Reduction Act, and hiring an army of IRS agents to go after people who don't pay their fair share, that's some way fighting inflation. It's absolutely ridiculous. Subsidies do not fight inflation. Market forces, real market forces fight inflation. So what we need to do is increase the supply of goods and services. And to do that, you have to create productivity. And only productivity, that, that is the genuine fight against inflation, is to increase productivity. And I will tell you, productivity in Q1 of this year was Minus 4.6%. Productivity in Q2 was minus 4.1%. So, you know, handing money to people and telling them they don't have to work. And if they go outside, they're going to ca catch a disease that's going to kill them. That is the antithesis of how to produce a productive nation. So what we've done is we, we've, we've killed productivity. Our population growth is, labor force growth is is half a percent. That's the long-term trend. So long-term GDP growth, instead of being where it should be, you know, low to mid single, single digits, it's now negative. You know, you mentioned the growth of the IRS. Do you think this could be because the government recognizes what falling tax receipts could mean? And how would falling tax receipts affect the federal government? Well, falling tax receipts are going to happen. That's what always happens in a recession. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the debt service payments on the national debt are skyrocketing. They're close to 15% of GDP right now, 15% of income to the government. So, you know, the idea that the Fed, and right now the Fed funds rate is 2.3%. The idea that it can go to 4% and the 10-year note can go to 5%, you know, the debt service payments are going to skyrocket. And I'll tell you this, if they didn't, Tom, if they didn't fight inflation, let's just take it to Japan for a second. If Japan didn't cap interest rates at 0.25%, what do you think their debt service costs would be on a quadrillion yen in debt? And their, their interest rates on a free market basis would be double digits because mm -hmm. it's, an, it's an insolvent nation. Well, where do you think if, if inflation in the United States is 8% or thereabouts, and, in, and legitimately, if you counted it right, it's closer to 17%, down from 20%. If inflation is 17% and you have the national debt, which has absolutely skyrocketed to the highest ratio it's ever been outside of World War II, right after World War II, what do you think a fair interest payment would be on that? It, it wouldn't be 2 or 3%. The interest costs would be closer to double digits. So, but that makes us, a, that would make us an insolvent nation if we had to pay a legitimate interest on our debt. So, this is a very complicated and intricate trap. There is no easy answer. Either you fight inflation, bring interest rates down, cause a recession and a depression, that causes the, the receipts to the government to crash, which means that interest rates are gonna skyrocket anyway, for a short period of time at least. But then you have, that's, that's the real way to fix this. You know, at the end of all this, you'll have restructuring, You'll have defaults, reorganization of debt, and then you can come out of this on the, you know, with some sense of reality, you know, on the other side. Mm -hmm. The other tactic to take is, hey, just 
let's just keep on. I, I even heard this today before this interview. I had this guy come on. He was talking about how the Fed can't raise interest rates, can't fight inflation because it'll destroy the economy. Well, what do you think is going to happen? What do you think would happen if the Fed came out and said, OK, you're right. We cannot fight inflation because the unemployment rate might rise a little bit. Well, what do you think would happen to our dollar? Where do you think long term rates would go? Duration bonds would skyrocket. Who would buy all of this debt knowing that we had we admitted that the, the U.S. government admitted it could never control inflation, has no power at all or any will or desire to do so. So they are trapped. This is a very big problem. And for people who sit there and believe, well, you know, you just dollar cost average, you just <laughs> buy and hold stocks and everything's going to be fine. Well, maybe that was true in 1960, you know, when we had a real economy. But ever since the year 2000, we don't have a – I mean, does anybody really, Tom, go out and start making a calculation on what stocks to buy based on a discount to cash flow? Nobody does that anymore. Nobody with a half a brain does that anymore. You know what they do now? Chase momentum. They read the tea leaves from every utterance of Jerome Powell. All they really care about is all they really want to know. And it's it's a fact. Just look at the, the direction of stocks based upon every utterance that comes out of Jerome Powell's mouth. If he came out tomorrow and said inflation is coming down quickly and I don't think we have to do any more rate hikes, the dollar would crash and stocks would go up several thousand points. But if he comes out and continues to say, hey, we... We've said it and we're going to do it. We are going to raise interest rates to 4% and we will continue to keep them there for a long time until inflation is vanquished. Then the stock market is going to continue in this you know, incipient but still brutal bear market. And I want to just make this point very clear. I said it before. I want to make sure I, I hammer this home. In March of this year, it was 0% on the Fed funds rate. It's going to be 4 by March of 23. In other words, the negative effects from the rate hikes have yet to really begun to be felt. Mm -hmm. The Fed's balance sheet is still at eight point nine trillion dollars. It's very close to eight point nine trillion. It's only about it's only down about a hundred billion dollars from the top. The Fed says they're going to drain ninety five billion a month for two to two and a half years. That hasn't even begun to be felt. So there are times, and this is my whole predicate of my, my inflation, deflation, and economic cycle model. There are times when you want to underweight this asset and overweight that asset. Mm -hmm. there, are times, but there are times, by the way, Tom, if you look at Japan, they peaked in 89. If you look at China, their Shanghai index peaked in 2007. So the idea, and even in this country, it's been, there are times when 15 years have gone by where you have made no, you have made no money at all. So there are times, I mean, money managers are out there. Earn your money. Don't take people's money, put it in the 60-40 basket, and tell people that you can't time the market to so just go out there and raise some more assets because eventually things will be great. That used to be true. It is definitely no longer the case. Mm -hmm. And to your point, Michael, you know, I think the way the math works out, if we go from zero to 4%, the amount of money that needs to service that debt every year would be something on the order of 1.2 trillion dollars because it's 300 billion for every 100 basis point hike so it just that's an absolutely untenable situation it seems like 